Hey, this is Roy Canny, and today we're going to be taking a look at the newest expansion for Marvel Champions, The Wrecking Crew. All right, so here we have the Wrecking Crew setup. So the rules have a little bit different setup for the Wrecking Crew guys here. You're not gonna be adding in your own obligation or adding in the standard stuff for the cards here. Each of the different um, villains here is gonna have its own deck. So you have all four of the Wrecking Crew and you're doing the breakout main scheme. Um, so this is slightly different because only one of these is gonna be the active villain at a time. And when they're active, you're going to be having that villain scheme or attack and then you're going to be drawing for their deck for the threats and things like that so and the scheme or the main villain will be changing based off of the main scheme here so it's kind of interesting and it's based off of whoever has the most threat currently here so you start with wrecker um if you ended up thwarting down his threat here at the um beginning of the villain phase this would switch around to whoever's next in line um so then if you made his threat go down then it would go all the way over to bulldozer so it's kind of interesting you they all have different hit points um, and when you knock one of these guys out, you're going to completely remove the guy and his side scheme. Also, all these side schemes have a thing that if they get to 10, they trigger an ability. And then it's going to mess up the heroes. And then you're going to be uh, removing it back down to 3. And then starting over with that so it's very interesting because like when the wrecker's going you're going to be drawing from the wrecker's deck and seeing what happens for all the stuff when thunderball's going you're going to draw from his deck and you're basically trying to take out all of these different heroes also an interesting thing is whenever you would place threat for um basically the start of the villain phase you'd place one here and then you also place one on each of the villain side schemes so then you would determine who has the most and that would be the new active villain for this enemy phase. And it's kind of interesting because there's a bunch of cards in here as well that can like switch that up and you're never quite sure who you're going to be attacking. Um, but basically that's it. I'm going to take a closer look at all of these different villains now to uh, see exactly what's going on and how it is. Basically you're just trying to knock all of them out to win the game. All right, the Wrecking Crew, let's look at a few of the cards here. So one of the interesting things is you have the different Wrecking Crew villains here. They come with an A and a B, and this helps you adjust the difficulty. So if you want to be on standard or easy mode, you have them all set on A, and you can adjust the difficulty by switching them out to B as it goes along. They're going to have stronger stats then, and then also, of course, more hit points per player. So you can adjust the difficulty how you want there. But let's just look at the standard ones for a bit here. So Wrecker, he has two scheme and two attack. Um, when the Wrecker schemes, you place the threat um, on his side scheme instead of the main scheme. This is a, a text that every single one of these guys has. So they're going to be boosting up their side scheme, moving into triggering whatever the ability is on that as well. And then for his attack, he has a special thing here. Um, while attacking, he gets plus two attack if the attack is undefended. So if you don't defend against him, he's going to hit you for four instead of two. So really rough. And then, of course, that gets way worse if you do the um b version but yeah and he has 14 hit points per player so you have to be able to knock him out um so yeah and let's take a look at his card here day of reckoning this is his side scheme um so basically what it does here is it can't leave play while he's in play and another thing is when these guys actually get knocked out these do automatically leave play so that's kind of helpful um also hard hitter forced response after the threat is placed here if there is 10 or more threat deal two damage to each friendly character remove all but three threat for this scheme while this will really knock out a whole bunch of your um sidekicks and all of your allies and stuff like that if uh it ends up triggering but yeah, you try to you can try to minimize these or just try to knock out the villain to try to take those out. Um, so that's his stuff there. And um, we're gonna look at a few of his cards. So there's all sorts of different ones here. There's your dead meat, when revealed, deal one damage to a hero or ally with the fewest, um, chaos in prison. Um, there's all sorts of different ones that choose either to discard and upgrade your control. A lot of these are like, if this attack is undefended, they have a lot of boost abilities on these, I've noticed. Discard and upgrade, so it kind of does what it would do anyway. Um, I don't want to look through all of these, but um, there's several different cards here that you can get. Um, there are also a lot of, like, convict bad guys or minions that can pop out of these decks as well. I think each one of these decks has an escaped conflict, and each one also has one of the um, corrupt prison guards, which will end up guarding 
um, the bad guys and stuff like that, making it harder to take them down. Um, but it's interesting all the different stuff that comes with these, um, mixing it up, and each each one of these has a little bit different of a feel. And um, so it's kind of interesting to play against different ones and figure out which one you're going to take out first and so on and so forth. Um, well, let's look at Thunderball here. So Thunderball has three scheme, one attack. Um, when he schemes, of course, he puts it on his side scheme. This is the one that has huge scheme, which means his side scheme can trigger a whole lot faster. But his attack's not as bad. But the annoying thing about his attack is after he attacks, he deals one damage to each character you control. So he can once again mess up your, your allies and stuff like that. So that's the A version. And of course, the B version just has better stats, more attack. Um, pretty rough. And his side scheme here is that um, once it gets to 10, um, he will stun each friendly character, remove all but three fret from this thing. So he's going to stun all of your people if he ends up getting this to 10. And his deck, of course, has a bunch more cards. They have a lot of, like, weapon upgrades, too, which can end up making their attack and such stronger. Um, this is going to do, like, what his basic special ability does. It's going to deal one damage to each friendly character. And then the boost also deals one damage to the defending character when it comes out as a boost card. So lots of interesting stuff for all of these cards. And, of course... Most people want to discover these as they're playing the game, but it's kind of interesting to see sometimes some of these cards can come out and it can be really deadly depending on if they come out at the right time. This guy used to only do one attack and now he's going to end up doing four unless I um, discard um, after he attacks. So basically he can become really strong depending on the cards that come out. Cool. Let's take a look at the next guy here, Pile Driver. So Pile Driver, he, this is the guy that I like to take out last normally, just because he has Retaliate one. So he's going to be hitting you back for one each time you hit him, and that's with anybody. So that makes it really rough for your allies. And then uh, he has two and two, so kind of even on these. And of course, he's going to put any of the stuff he would scheme with onto his side scheme. His side scheme, by the way. Um, is if it's 10 or more there, each player discards an upgrade or support they control with the highest cost to remove all but three threat from the scheme. So he's going to mess up your upgrades and stuff like that. Um, so Pile Driver has, of course, some more cards. This guy has all sorts of stuff that kind of triggers off toughness I've seen. Um, so all sorts of different interesting stuff going on. Um, but yeah, he get extra hit points or... And here's more of those escape convicts and pummel can end up doing extra damage to you and surprise you. A lot of these are kind of interesting. Remove stun tokens and status cards. If not, it gains surge, so it can end up helping them out. There's also a lot of these that sometimes um, will uh, mix up who's actually attacking you. It'll be like, hey, you thought this guy was attacking you. Now he'll switch it up. All right, the last one here is Bulldozer. This is the guy that hits for tons of damage. Um, so he has one scheme, not too bad when he's scheming. Of course, when he schemes, he only puts it on his thing instead of the main one. Um, and then you have three attack here. Um, when he attacks, he gets overkill, which basically that's basically like where he tramples through. And if your allies or if your allies block, he's going to still end up doing damage to you. So pretty tough stuff because this guy can hit pretty hard, especially because his deck has all sorts of really high boosts in it sometimes. Um, but yeah, with his side scheme here, if there are 10 or more cards here, you have to discard the top 10 cards of your deck and then remove all but three threat from the scheme. This one's not that terrible, but of course, if you run your whole deck out, you're going to end up having to draw more of those um, terrible threat cards. Um, or you might get some treacheries that come out. And then we'll look at some of his stuff here. Discard the top cards of your deck. So more stuff that just kind of mills your deck out. Um, Chaos in Prison, choose to either discard an upgrade you control or place one threat on the active villain's side scheme for each upgrade you control. If you do not control any upgrades, this card gains Surge. It's just another thing that can kind of trigger some of those side schemes. It's kind of interesting because there are certain ones. Let's see if I can find one. Um, this one's kind of interesting. Um, so get wrecked. So... If you're an alter ego form, the villain whose side scheme has the most threat schemes. So this can make somebody scheme again. 
Or if you're in hero form, the villain whose side scheme has the least threat attacks you. So this might end up making somebody attack you that you weren't quite prepared for, which those kind of mix it up. And of course, he has all sorts of upgrades to upgrade his attack and make things even worse for you when he's jumping on you. Um, but yeah, these guys are all pretty interesting and they have slightly different flair and feel to each of their little decks, which you'll notice as you play the game. And then we'll just take a closer look again at the main scheme here. So this is the main thing, um, six per player to lose the game and this is going to go up by one each and then of course when it goes up this this one's kind of interesting because it only goes up one period so regardless of the player count it just goes up one but when it goes up one here it puts one on each of those guys side schemes so very interesting as this card each turn it's building up all their side schemes you're trying to min max how people are going let's take a look at what i think about the wrecking crew All right, so my thoughts on Wrecking Crew. I think it's definitely very interesting how they have mixed it up a whole lot with this scenario. The fact that you now have four different villains that you're trying to take out, they have slightly different decks and you're trying to like maximize like who's gonna be attacking where, you're trying to figure out which side your character's gonna be on based off of which villain is currently the main one. I always found myself trying to like figure out a way to engineer it so the guys that had high attack and low scheme, I was on my alter ego for. And then whenever I was against somebody with high scheme and low attack, I was on my hero form. So I was trying to like figure out how to min max that um, and be in the right place at the right time. It's definitely very interesting how like it'll like jump around sometimes when you're not expecting it. You'll get a threat card out that switches who's attacking you and this other guy's jumping in on the side. Um, it makes it feel very thematic as that sort of stuff is happening. Um, I definitely think it's kind of cool the fact that you don't have have to have like the standard cards in here and you don't have to throw in your obligation so it makes setup for this even though you're having to set out all the different decks you don't have to like rebuild any decks you just put this out and you can play the game with just what's in the box here and whatever hero you end up playing um i guess technically you could play this with a side hero thing and you would probably be fine as long as you had something to use for the tokens um, for the game. So that's kind of an interesting thing, the fact that you don't need the standard bad guy cards in there. That's one of the things that's kind of annoys me is that you have to have those standard cards and move them out of this deck, bad guy deck, and put it in that one. Move it out of this one, put it in that one. With this one, you just play with what's in this pack. Um, it's definitely kind of cool that they are all like jumping around and doing all these different things. You're trying to make sure you either knock them out before their side scheme goes to 10 or figure out if that's something that you're just gonna like wait for it to go all the way up. And then once it gets down to three, try to like keep it down so it doesn't go off again. It's very interesting how you have to like min max everything in this game. Marvel Champions is a game about min-maxing and figuring out how to move your characters around and activate all of their different abilities. And this definitely gives you an interesting challenge when you're trying to do that with your cool new characters. Um, they could be pretty hard, I feel like, if you're playing with a lot of players because their hit points are going to go up like crazy. And we have all of these characters with lots of hit points. I played this several times solo, so it wasn't as hard because they're all there. Um, but you do have that option to flip them over to the B side and give them a little bit of extra hit points, make them hit a little bit harder, and maybe you challenge yourself with like, okay, now I'm going to play with one character on their B side. Now I'm going to play with two characters on their B side and see how far you can take it before you just get pummeled by the Wrecking Crew. I, I love what they're doing with these and I love how basically every single expansion that has come out for this game has had like a different flair and a different feel to it. So if you're at all interested in Marvel Champions, if you're this far in, you probably already know. But yeah, the Wrecking Crew is great. I really enjoyed it. So I think it's awesome. Thanks so much for joining me on this review. Make sure to leave down in the comments below what hero you would love to see entering the game. I know we've got Doctor Strange and Black Widow and stuff like that coming out. Lots of exciting stuff. Oh, and Thor. I'm ready for more aggression. Um, so it'll be cool to see where they go. But where's my Guardians of the Galaxy at? I would love to see. Man, if they bring X-Men and stuff in this game, that'd be crazy. Make sure to leave in the comments what you think they should add to Marvel Champions. Thank you for joining me here on this review, and I'll see you on the next one.